Hello everyone and welcome to Nick Rip. My name is Cody and in today's video we're going to go over how to make this really super duper cute strawberry whale. In my last tutorial for the fruit whale series we went over how to make the apple whale so if you're curious about that I'm going to make a playlist for all the fruit whale series and they'll be linked down below. I'm hoping to do a bunch of them. I have a ton of different ideas and some that I've already made. I'll post some pictures right up here so you can see them. They'll pop right up. It's super cute and I just I, I love how they look they're super adorable so I'm also doing as an addendum to that I'm also working on a fruit turtle series too because I'm going to be doing a turtle uh, tutorial hopefully after this one and there's just polyfill and fur all over my desk because why wouldn't there be I have a really cute uh, sushi turtle that I worked on and I'm thinking about doing the ninja turtles too because I think that would be adorable and using my Cricut machine to cut their eyes out uh, not cut their eyes out, but to cut the eyes for their face out on it, like the little bandana. So on a less morbid turn, we're going to be working on this little strawberry whale. And I'm thinking about also doing some kits. Hopefully by the time this video is up, I'm going to be posting a uh, whale one, but I'm also thinking I'm going to do the all of the fruit wheel series as little crochet kits where you can follow along with the video and actually have me send you all the stuff that you would need for that on my Etsy. So if you're interested in that, again, if they are up, the links will be down in the doobly. If I they are not and I forgot, just remind me down in the comments because sometimes I can be a little bit scatterbrained. Not that you could tell from my videos, but for this project, you're going to need some 15 millimeter eyes. Uh, I get mine right off of Amazon. I get a big giant pack of them and they go for forever. If you use like a 12 to a 15, you'll be in a good range. The turtles have 12s. These are 15s just to give you an idea of the size difference. I like the bigger ones because they look nice, big and bulbous, but I think those look good on the turtles as well. You're gonna need some polyfill, not a lot. Honestly, about 0.5 ounce. I actually just measured it out. Um, 0.5 ounces and that will do you right for a turtle. We're also gonna be using a crochet hook. In this video, we're using my Pearls crochet hook and a 3.25 millimeter crochet hook links down below for my affiliate stuff with furls if you're interested in getting your own and you want to help support the channel i also am going to be using a tapestry or darning needle just like a little blunt tip needle works really well some scissors and for the yarn i'm using i love this cotton which is a yarn be yarn and i'm using these colors today I'm going to be doing this lighter green for this tutorial and I'm going to be using the red so you can see what this lighter green looks like on the red color but this other like I think it's like a marigold green or something like that I'll put the the name of it right here but that's what I usually like for the red because I think it pops a lot more but I wanted to also show people what it looks like to have this lighter green and I'm going to put a little what you will need thing already popped up on here so you'll have all the colors and all that but you will also need some red yarn some green yarn and some white yarn whatever you want to do this is all in worsted weight size for yarn I'm using I love this cotton which I believe is at Hobby Lobby so if that's something you're interested in and you want to get exactly what I got that is what I did. This is just cotton and I really like it. So, all right, let's go ahead and get started. Oh, and before we start, as always, there will be a principal PDF for this down below, free for the first week for those that are subscribed and clicking on that video immediately. Otherwise, it is a $3 pattern on my Ravelry and also on my Etsy, all linked down below. Okay, so for this, we're gonna start with the stem. I like doing the stem first because honestly, you'll see why as I progress and as I go through. The stem, it, it is just easiest to do it first. So we're gonna put our hook onto our slip knot, and for the stem, we are going to do something a little bit different. We're going to chain six. So one, two, three, four, five, six keep it kind of loosey-goosey but not so loose that you end up with giant holes but you are going to be working back into those chains so that's why i say kind of keep it loose and not as firm as you might want to we're going to skip our last chain that we just created and put a single crochet into the fifth chain so that was six this is five we're going to single crochet one and we're going to do that for the next three chains so two 
three. And this is the final chain that we're gonna do that on. We're gonna get the polyfill off of our work right there. And the final single crochet. So for a total of four single crochets or three past the one that you just did first. Now we have one last chain right here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna slip stitch off. So I'm gonna go inside that initial chain that we created, go like that, slip stitch, kind of tighten everything up, make our tails the same length, ah! same length. And for now, what we're gonna do is pull that off and we're gonna set this aside. I promise you we will come right back to this as soon as we finish our top, but it is easier to add this before we finish the rest of the body. So I'm gonna show you how to do the little top part and how I get that done. So we're gonna put this over onto our turtle buddy. He's just gonna hang out over there. And little buddy right here is gonna go back here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our nice light green. Your tail doesn't super duper matter. I like to just make it not super duper long. We're gonna create another slip knot. And here, we're gonna do our magic ring. We're gonna start like we usually would start. We're going to chain two and create our magic ring. However method you need to do to make your magic ring, you do it. I just usually chain my one and two skip my second chain and go back into my first chain like so and here i'm going to start us off this is our beginning and we're going to make six single crochet on the inside of our magic ring so three four five and six giant gaping hole that is okay that is normal we're just going to take our tail tug it and that will close it up. And so for here, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take our hook, go back into the very first single crochet that we made, and now we're working in the round. We're gonna start going around and around and around, but usually we're just gonna do it for this one for this part and part here. We are now working in the round. And what we do in order to increase is we're going to put two stitches inside of a single stitch from the first round. We are now on round two. We went right back inside that same stitch right there and two. So again, next stitch, we're gonna put two stitches inside that one. So one, go back inside that same stitch and two. Go into the third stitch, one and two. We're gonna be taking these six stitches and going up to 12 essentially. So one and two. One and two. Try not to keep it too, too tight. My tension's a little bit hard today because I've been working with scrubby yarn a bunch and so my hands are a little bit sore, but that's why I'm trying to like consciously make it so that I'm not going too hard. So one, same stitch, two, and I believe that was the last one that we needed to increase. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. We have 12 stitches and here is where things get a little funky. So for our strawberry top, this is where we are going to be working exclusively through the front loop only. I generally, with my amigurumi, work through front loop only. So if that's what you uh, I haven't been doing that from this point on here, you need to. Um, and I do that for the rest of my body as well. For the most part, I'd work through front loop only unless I designate the back loop only like the rest of the whale. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to single crochet one. If this is going to be a repetition of these two stitches. So through front loop only, single crochet one chain six do exactly like we did with our little stem here we're gonna chain six go one two three four five and six skip that last stitch go into the fifth one single crochet into all of these stitches two three Sorry about all the cars. It's loud today for some reason. And five. So there should be five single crochet. And we're going to slip stitch into the next stitch. We're going to do that through the front loop only. And so I tend to actually tighten up a little bit while I do that so the hole isn't quite as large. But here, I loosen up right here. I tighten up when I go there, but here I go a little bit looser to make this stitch a little bit easier to work into. And then we repeat. We're gonna do that all the way around. So single crochet one, chain six, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Skip, single crochet five, one, 
two, three, if I can get into it. See, this is what I mean by like try to consciously not go too tight. Four and five. And then slip stitch front loop only into that one. We're gonna repeat that all the way around until we get to the last stitch. So we are on our last tendril right here. We're finishing up our single crochet down the chain. And after that, what we're going to do is we're going to slip stitch off the final time. We're gonna not let that rip. That sometimes happens. There we go. Let's go back inside there and try not to go too high up on the camera because I do that a lot. All right, there we go. Slip stitch off and don't go through um, both loops when you do slip stitch off. Create a decently long tail because you will use that to sew later. It doesn't need to be super duper long, just enough that you can work with it later. And here you have your strawberry top. So from here, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna leave our tail, let it just kind of sit there for a minute. We will hide that later. It's not super duper important right now, but we're gonna attach our little stem. That way it's not harder later. I find that it's easier just to do it now. And with our stem facing us, you're gonna take the right a uh, nice little string here or the one that you slip stitched off with and we're gonna take our darning needle and we're gonna plop that right on and right here I know that we're probably gonna be facing this is probably gonna be the side of our little guy it doesn't super duper matter but we're gonna take our darning needle and stab it through the right side kind of closer to this and then pull that down and not let it get tangled into our little stems like so let that drag right there. Take our other piece right here and go to the other side. So right here, you have your center. We're gonna go into the side on the left part. That way it's centered and it looks better that way. There we go. Oh, no, 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 don't do that. I put it right through the loop, oops, like that. So we're gonna find our two right here these are our two right here it's hard to tell i know but he's in the center so i know he's not the right one and we're just gonna double knot it and then we're gonna cut a bunch of our tails and make it not nearly as obnoxious and taily so we're gonna pull that kind of snug not so snug that it's ridiculous but you know and snug and now that that's attached that's it that's all i do for my uh my little stem here. We're then going to take these and cut them and I'll show you what we do next in order to do the rest of the body and how funky that's gonna look. It's gonna look great, don't worry. Be right back. Cut it nice and short. Those tails can just kind of go away. I made them long so that I can manage them, not so that they could really do anything. We're gonna leave this tail again, still just kind of sitting here. I know it's annoying to leave a tail, but I promise you it will work out in the end. And so now we're gonna take whatever color, if you're gonna go pink, white, red, whatever your main body color is, I'm gonna be going with some red. We're gonna pull this over like so and we're going to start working into some back loops. Back loop only, we're again letting that all sit and kind of just avoiding these tails here. You're gonna wanna start where your tail forms. And so here, what we're gonna do is a little funky. So we're gonna go through this loop right here, right across from our piece here. And what we're going to do is kind of join our yarn. The way that I do that is I just slip stitch on and chain one that way it's just attached it'll drag don't worry we're gonna do some funky stuff with these two tails later we're gonna go back inside and single crochet one in order to marry these two together we're essentially going to go over here and go into the next back loop right next to it and kind of marry them together and we're going to do an increase we are single crocheting one and increasing through these back loops. We just married them right there. So single crochet one, go into the next stitch. 
things might be a little tight because of how I tied things off with that, but it's fine, it'll work. And go through with two stitches on that loop. And essentially we're gonna be going from 12 stitches, so we have 12 back loops on the back here, and going up to 18. I have been known to uh, mess up occasionally, and sometimes I'll just frog it and put an extra stitch where I don't need an extra, or where I need an extra stitch and I just make it work. But essentially at the end of this round, you're on round three now, <laughs> believe it or not, it feels like we're on a lot more, um, you end up wanting to have 18 stitches. So we're gonna go and increase here, one, keep the tails out of the way and a two in this one and then one and two so we have this red just sticking back here and what I like to do at this point is this kind of keeps bothering me just sitting there just doing whatever it wants so we're gonna take our hook Go up through the red, kind of as close as we can get to the top, wrap our tail around that and bring it back to the underside like so. That way it's hidden, it's not there anymore, and I will actually tie these two together after the next round. Not this round, because if I do, it'll be too tight. But we're just gonna try to keep our messy tail situation that's happening here. It's chaos, I know. Um, we should have 18 stitches. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 stitches. We have 18 and it's great. We actually did it. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to go to round four now and single crochet one and increase. And single crochet one. Single crochet one, increase single crochet one. If you prefer stacking your increases versus staggering them, it's essentially just a single crochet two and increase. I'm just splitting the difference. That way it looks a little bit better in my opinion. I prefer staggering my stitches. And if you don't know about staggering versus stacking, I have a link down below for uh, how to stagger your increases versus stacking them and the benefits of staggering your uh, stitches. We are still going through the front loop only and we're gonna single crochet one single crochet one increase and i'm kind of just treating this right here this end here as our marker and i'm looking at it that way single crochet one these little bobbins make it really hard to actually see the stitches one increase One. One. Increase. One. One. Increase. One. One, I think this is our last one. Oh, that was our last one. No, that was our last one. Never mind. Undo that one. Undo, undo, undo. Okay, so now we should have 24 stitches on our work. I'm gonna double check. Jeez, the cars are noisy today. We're gonna double check and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4. And here is where I have my two tails. They're just kind of hanging out. And we're going to double knot them just to make it so that they all kind of come together. Join, double knot, one, and then two. I'm not going to cut the tail for the green, but I am going to cut the tail just a little bit for the red. That way it's all kind of together. So here we're going to now single crochet three. Don't worry, we will fix the fact that this is all kind of just curling up like this. If you like that look then great, but I'll show you what I do in order to make it so that it's flat like that, but that's not until after I've stuffed. So there's that. What we're going to do now is we're going to single crochet three. One, two, three. 
and then increase. We're going from 24 stitches up to 30. This is the same now. We've only done the uh, top different. The rest of it is just normal whale. So one, two, three. Right. One, two, three, and then increase. And actually, I might go over here and go through that stitch and actually pull that tail through. That way you can see the stitch marker and pull that through. It doesn't actually need to be that long. There we go. I can fix things. There we are. So one, two, don't split my yarn, three, and four, increase. Well, not four increase, but increase on the fourth stitch. There we go. One, two, three, four, increase. One, two, three, four, increase one two three four and increase and I believe we're on our last repetition yep because the tails right there so one two three and four also increase Take our tail, move it forward. And so now with this whale, we're just gonna single crochet around for four rounds, and then I'll show you how we do the tail. So I'm just kind of making the body length longer and longer and longer, and then I'll show you how we go about making this little tail. It's the same as in my traditional whale video, but I figure if you don't wanna go back and forth those two different places, then this might make it easier for you. Be right back as soon as I get the body done on this. All right, so now I've single crocheted around for four rounds. I then did another round around. And essentially what I'm going to do now is that I'm gonna stop that round one stitch before the uh, end of that round. And now we're gonna work on the tail. And how I do the tail on this one is we're gonna chain four, one, two, three, four. We're going to skip the first stitch from our hook and go into the second stitch from our hook. Do a double crochet, gently. Go into the next chain and do a half double crochet, which means we just go through all three like that. And then we're gonna do a single crochet on that last chain, giving us this nice little bobbin here. We're then going to slip stitch and repeat that same process where we chain one, two, three, four, skip, go into the third stitch, essentially. One, and then two. Go into the middle stitch, half double crochet, and then single crochet. We're then going to go into what would be the first stitch of our sixth round around, but we're not going to do anything. We're just going to slip stitch that right off. I leave a small tail. It doesn't need to be super duper long, just enough to kind of hide it on the inside there. Pull that through, and now we're going to make the belly, and the belly is the same as a normal whale. So I'll show what that looks like for this. I actually have a different method for attaching my yarn uh, that makes it a bit more seamless than in my previous whale videos. So I'm gonna show how I do that. We're gonna go through these back loops here. So instead of going through front loop only, we're gonna go through back loop only. But we're initially going to go through this center loop right underneath our tails like that. But while it's still there, we're then gonna go into what would be the first loop after 
the first back loop after our tail right here. I'm going through both of those. It kind of just marries it together and gives you a better looking tail. We're then going to chain one, like so. Slip stitch in and chain one. Go back inside that same stitch and do a single crochet. Now going through the back loops only, so leaving this nice little front loop as a ridge, we're going to single crochet around this entire round. So leaving and dropping that front loop creates that nice little kind of whale mouth line. It's kind of cute and I like it. So if that's what you're into, then that's what I would do. Once this round is done, I tend to add the eyes afterwards. And we're essentially going to continue on our whale like normal and what we did for our whale tutorial a little bit ago. The only difference is how I just added on. I'm not sure if I actually did that in the most recent 2021 update, but I've been doing that lately with my whales, so if that's something that you're interested in, then there's that. I'm going to fast forward through this until I get to the start or end of this round. Alright, so now we're getting to the very, very end. We have three stitches left, so I'm going to keep doing through those. One, two, and then three. Our last stitch is right there, and now what we're going to do is we're going to go back inside that initial little bump there. We're going to do a little single crochet, and now you should have 30 stitches on your work. We're going to put that tail in there. You can tug that or however you want to do it. I also tend to, also, I also tend to take my tail from up here and put that on the inside and now I'm going to add my eyes. What I like to do for my eyes is lately I find that I like them better when they're a little bit closer together so I count out 10 stitches from the tail. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Stabby stab. Keep my eye above the little ridge. If I have to move it, I will. I'm not going to cap that quite yet. I'm also going to count over here. I like to count first and get them settled before I add the backs to them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Just in case I have to adjust it for whatever reason. If I don't like how it looks, that is actually perfect. So I will add the backs to those. Pop that right on. Go like that. Pop that right on, just like so. So now I'm going to continue doing my decreases the same way that I would for my traditional whale. I'm going to actually take this tail and feed it through the back of the stitch, not through the front, right here. I'm going to pull that through to the back side, tug it in, and that way it's going to be inside the whale and hidden. If you want to try to run it through some back stitches, you can do that too. However you feel the most comfortable, I just let it kind of lay on the inside. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to go back to going through front loop only. If I can get through the loop, it's a little tight. There we go. We're going to go back. Oh, nope, I still didn't get it. There we go. Okay, so now we're going back to front loop only, and we have 30 stitches on our work, which means we're going to go one, two, three. And then four and five are going to be put together in a decrease like so, where I go through both the front loops of four and five, and then I single crochet through both of them like so. So one, two, three, four, five, like so. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to continue that until I get down to 24 stitches. So one, two, and we're going from 30 down to 24. I split that earlier, so I'm gonna fix that. There we go. Two, three, four, five. One, two, three, 
four, five, and I'm treating my tail as it's a marker now, so it's going to be right underneath that stitch. So one, two, three, and then four, five, putting those two stitches together. We are now going to single crochet one. If you want to put your tail, your, your white tail through there, you can. I actually might do it just to make it a little bit easier for people to see. There we go, like so. So I already did my one for this round. Go two, three together. So single crochet one, decrease single crochet one. We're again doing the inverse of how we increased over here. And then single crochet one, single crochet one, decrease and single crochet one, single ooh, crochet one, decrease. This offsets your decreases and single crochet one, which again makes them a little bit more invisible. Single crochet one, decrease. Make sure you don't split your yarn. Single crochet one, one, decrease, one, one, yep, and there we go, decrease, this is our final repetition, and one, no, don't split, there we go, and one, I'm gonna actually move that forward, up through here, just to make sure, and since we have our eyes on, and we're getting pretty close to being capped off. What I'm going to do now is we're going to take some of our fluff and stuff as best as we can. I've got some left over over here, so I'm just going to stuff as much as I can. And once I am fully stuffed on my whale, then I'm going to finish up. We have 18 stitches now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 stitches currently actively happening right now. And we're going to be going from 18 down to 12. And then after that, from 12 down to 6. And I'll show you how I use my tail to create these cute little white strawberry marks. That's how I actually make the marks on there. And also how I use that same white yarn to make the little eye accent on your safety eye. Be right back as soon as I get this completely stuffed. All right, so I stuffed a good amount, but I'm not all the way done. We're gonna do one more repetition of our decreases, going from 18 down to 12 before I stuff a little bit more. I always tend to do this where I understuff and then as soon as I get it so it's not quite as hectic, I stuff a little bit more. So let's get this a little bit better angled so you can see from this angle. We're going to single crochet one. and then go through the next two stitches. So we're single crocheting one and then decreasing the next two stitches. One, it's a little hard to see, two together. Try to tug it tight too, because I know that I can make bigger holes on here, which makes it easier to see the stuffing. And that's not what you want. See, like that hole would be really easy to see stuffing. So I'm going to redo that actually. You can always undo. Tug it, make it a little bit smaller. It does not need to be huge. Your tension is important. Bring those two together, tug it tight. I do a normal single crochet, kind of normal tension. Uh, single crochet those two together while holding my tension a little bit more. And then the last one is single crochet one and two together. And on our final row, we have 12 stitches active happening right now. But what we want is to have six, but I need to stuff just a little bit more before we can do that because right now it's going to just have a nice little like indent if I don't do it anymore. So we're going to add a little bit more stuffing. Some of my older stuff actually, so I don't like the stuffing as much, but it will work on small amigurumi. So there we go, there we go. Just a little bit more. This I'm going to ball just a little bit, make it a little bit 
easier to kind of stuff and I kind of tuck it underneath all my little sides here and then I kind of push on it make sure that it's how I want it and there we go I think that's going to be about all she wrote for stuffing now we're going to tuck this and kind of make it a little bit more taut the tension anyway and I'm going to take actually this tail I don't need it anymore and I want it hidden on the inside so I'm going to take that and tuck it on the inside so that it can be um I'd rather have my tails on the inside and have them be long tails because they're less likely to come unwiggled so now I'm going to tug on this there we go and we're going to decrease every single two stitches together so we're going to be going from 12 down to six tight together one two and the way that I do my last decrease is a little bit different than how I'm doing these decreases so pay attention to the very last stitch that's the third put four together that's my fourth decrease we have two more decreases this one's gonna be normal so this is the fifth one and then the very last one, I do in a more traditional method. So instead of single crocheting these two together, we're going to skip this stitch and slip stitch into the very last stitch. So again, I'll show you. Skip, slip, going through either the front loop only or both. It doesn't super duper matter. Like so, and leave an absurdly long tail. You want it for darning and for embroidery. And so I'm going to leave like a good solid 24 inches just for later. We're going to pull that all the way through. And we're going to whip out our darning needle at this point. We're going to put that onto our darning needle. And we still have an issue of closing up here. So this doesn't look quite right still. What we like to do is we're going to take our darning needle and go through the front of the loop into the center. Like so. And tug. We're also going to make this a little bit less absurdly long, at least that way. There we go. Go through the front into the center for every single stitch that is currently open. So front to the center, front to the center, front to the center, front center, front center and front center take this through the center of your stitch and kind of work it across like so and I like to just kind of put it wherever I think will work I'm gonna put it over here actually for wherever I want to randomly place cute little strawberry white spots so I'm gonna tug on this pull it pull it pull it tug 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 like so that will close it up over here and now I'm just going to take this and feed it through random places. So I fed it through there, make a nice one stitch wide uh, embroidered little spot like so. Go up here, go over across, just kind of randomly start placing your little strawberry pieces like so. And keep in mind that wherever this lays down, that's where it's going to cover, so you might not want to put it in places that it's going to cover like so. So I tend to put them a little bit lower because I know that this will come down. I'm going to take fabric glue or hot glue and just kind of put those down. That way they are not all frayed and crazy. So that is how I make my little strawberry whale dots and I'm going to actually go off camera and hot glue these down. I literally just take a little tiny piece of hot glue and press it down. You can do fabric glue. You could even just take some extra green yarn and do what I'm doing here. Just like kind of overlay it and kind of stitch it down if that's what you want to do. I prefer the hot glue look to it because I don't like how my embroidery generally looks. I don't generally like that, so I'm going to finish up this little piece here, and then I'm going to come back and show you what this one looks like all done. Be right back. Oh, and once I'm done with this, I just kind of feed it through the bottom with a nice long string. I'll show what that looks like, actually. 
keep going around, keep going around. And it doesn't really matter the angle. It, it really doesn't. It's just however you want it to look. I like making them look kind of like so. And I'm generally happy with how many of those little strawberry specks I have. So I'm going to take my last stitch and go through like this. I did not need to make this long of a tail at all. And I'm going to take this and feed it through the center and go as far away as I can. That way when I cut it, it doesn't want to come undone. Oh, and the eyes. I also, well, I also like to go over here under the eye, right on the base, like so. Then I like to feed it up. I don't know why this eye feels like it's just outward. And I like to feed that upward, like so. I don't pull it super duper tight on this at all. That way it's not super duper um, taut at all. Um, then I'm gonna do the same thing over here and feed it across here and down and then I'm gonna actually take my tail and do what I was saying I was doing before. I think it's super duper cute to give it a little bit of a highlight on the eye if that's something that you're interested in. Otherwise just again go through the base, try to get it as far away as you can and that is it. I'm gonna go hot glue this and I'll be right back and show you how I do the little fins on the side. They're the same as my traditional whale. I don't know why, but the fins always seem like an afterthought for me. I always get them done whenever I'm making them, but whenever I'm doing tutorials for them, I just never remember to do them. So essentially, we're going to make this cute little fin, and I'm going to do it on this side of the body. Our little tail tends to try to curl up on itself. I think that's pretty cute. And what I'm going to do here is we're going to take our hook, and in one of these little front loops, we're going to go into the centermost one. So I kind of just eyeball it. Usually it's about four stitches on either side and then this ninth one here so five over here and then four stitches from the eye really because there's ten stitches a little messy but I just kind of stick it right in the middle like so and that's where I put my hook for now I'm going to grab my red yarn or whatever your main color yarn is so if you're making a pink one grab your pink white grab your white we're then going to kind of keep this to the right of our uh, piece here I'm going to make a nice long tail doesn't need to be that long though. There we go. And we're going to do the same thing where we add it on our white yarn. We're going to take it, grab it, pull it through, and then chain one. Try to get it so the polyfill isn't just completely covering everything. And then this is the one loop that we're going to go back inside. So we're going to do four single crochet all inside this little loop. Two, three, Four. It kind of blows it up a little bit, but it's fine. Go back inside that same stitch and slip stitch off. Leave a decently long tail so that you can then hide your tail using your darning needle. And that is pretty much all there is to this tutorial. I'm pretty excited. I have decided that I'm going to make little cute whale starter kits. I kind of just push it in as far as I can away from it, going underneath that little uh, front loop right there. Pull that in and try not to warp my yarn. That's funky looking. What did I do there? Anywho, pull that in. Oh, what did I do? I did something there with that loop. No, thank you. Let's undo that. I don't know what I just did. Oh, I guess it undid itself. That's... I guess I didn't tug it tight enough. That's bizarre. Okay, that's a little unusual. There we go. See, like, it looks fine now. Okay, so I didn't do anything. I think it just didn't pull it tight enough when I was doing that. All right, so I have decided that I'm, before I release this video, so it'll be up on my Etsy uh, by the time this is up, I'm actually going to put this at two separate angles. Uh, I am going to be making some cute little whale kits and I'm going to be making a strawberry version as well for this and I am going to be working on some turtles as well. I think my next tutorial is going to be how to do the base for the basic turtle and not just the strawberry. It's going to be essentially the same top for the strawberry and how I varied that on the whale body as well but I am going to be doing a full-blown tutorial for both the turtle and for the strawberry turtle and for a bunch of other different versions of the whales and the turtles. That's what I'm going to be spending my summer 
all summer doing so i'm pretty excited with how that turned out i am sorry for my sore throat sounding i don't know what's going on but i have a sore throat so that is pretty much it i hot glued the little pieces down here and that is all there is to this cute little strawberry whale kits will be available on my etsy so if you're interested in that go over to my etsy i also am going to be selling the physical product for this as well i mentioned that in a couple videos ago so if that's something that you're interested again down in our etsy all proceeds are going to go towards replacing my current editing computer so <laughs> be in the know for that i'm working on a 2010 macbook and i need a new macbook so that's why I've been posting everything on Etsy lately. Um, thank you for watching the video. Before we go, I'd like to give a shout out to our Patreon supporters. Without your support, we wouldn't be able to grow as a channel. So thank you for your generous pledges. If you're interested in supporting the channel financially, you can go to patreon.com slash knit and you can see different rewards that we give our patrons over there. Free patterns, early access to tutorials and some other stuff too. Uh, we have a Discord. So go ahead and pop over there if you're interested in talking about cute things like amigurumi uh we have a whole bunch of different channels on there so links again down below thanks again for watching and be sure to like hit subscribe and hit that little bell before you leave if you want to see more videos like this all right until next time guys bye